Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're focusing on an issue that has garnered increasing attention in recent years, PFAs contamination in our drinking water. PFAs are often called forever chemicals because they persist in the environment and in our bodies for years. They've been found in everyday products like nonstick cookware, stain-resistant fabrics, and even firefighting foam. Research indicates they can lead to significant health concerns, including cancer, weakened immune function, and infertility. Joining me is my co-host, Alara Skye, who has a special interest in natural approaches to health. We'll discuss how PFAs enter our water supply, how they affect our well-being, and what steps we can take to minimize exposure. Thank you, Ethan. I'm glad we're shedding light on PFAs today because many people remain unaware of just how prevalent these chemicals are. They're found in countless household items and have been detected in water sources across the nation. Some studies have linked PFAs exposure to a higher risk of childhood cancers, especially those of the blood and kidneys. There's also concern for adults, with associations to liver damage, infertility, and immune system impairment. Today, we'll examine how these chemicals reach our water supply, look at emerging filtration technologies, and discuss practical steps people can take at home to reduce their exposure. Let's begin with what PFAs are and why they have earned the name Forever Chemicals. PFAs stands for per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances. They're human-made chemicals that resist heat, oil, stains, and water. Because of these properties, they don't degrade easily, persisting in the environment for lengthy periods. We often find PFAs in manufacturing runoffs, landfill leaks, and even sites where firefighting foam has been used. Once these chemicals enter a water source, it becomes a long-term problem because they're difficult to remove using conventional means. Exactly. And that's where the concern arises. PFAs accumulate over time in water sources. When local industries use or dispose of products containing these chemicals, they can seep into rivers and groundwater, sometimes unnoticed. One example is the Cape Fear River in North Carolina, where industrial dumping led to high levels of PFAs. Residents relying on this river for drinking water experienced exposure without initially knowing it. Since PFAs are so persistent, stopping the source of contamination is not enough we must also deal with what's already present in the water. One of the most troubling aspects is the link to childhood cancers. In a study set for 2025, researchers found that children exposed to higher levels of PFAs in the womb showed an increased likelihood of blood and kidney cancers. This finding aligns with broader concerns about potential long-term health impacts. When we consider that PFAs can also contribute to infertility and other chronic conditions, it becomes clear why many refer to them as a silent threat. They often don't produce immediate symptoms, but they accumulate and pose a serious risk over time. Indeed, it's important to acknowledge that children can be especially vulnerable. Their developing bodies may be more susceptible to the negative effects of toxins in water and other sources. However, this is far from just a children's issue. Adults also face risks such as compromised liver health and a weaker immune system. Over time, PFAs can interfere with hormonal balance and various biological processes, raising concerns about long-term exposure for everyone. Let's talk about filtration. Many of us use basic water filters at home, whether it's a filter in the fridge or a simple pitcher filter. However, research has shown that most of these only trap PFAs temporarily. Eventually, these chemicals may escape back into the water supply. That's why it's critical to look for more robust methods capable of genuinely removing PFAs from the water, rather than merely containing them for a short while. Researchers in North Carolina have been working on new filtration technologies that do more than just trap PFAs. One method involves ion exchange, using a material that attracts PFAs and separates them from the water. Instead of letting these chemicals leak back into the environment, the trapped PFAs can be collected and destroyed by specialized facilities. This offers a long-term solution that prevents the chemicals from cycling back into someone's tap. This North Carolina research is associated with the work of Jordan Poehler, who developed a system leveraging ion exchange with a natural material known as zeolite. 
According to the information provided, zeolite has a large surface area that effectively captures PFAs. Importantly, this filter can be cleaned and reused, which reduces waste. Right now, this technology isn't widely available, but it has strong potential for broader adoption in municipal water treatment systems. There's hope that it will eventually reach individual households and play a part in community-level solutions. Meanwhile, researchers at the Institute of Science in Tokyo have taken another path. They use a carbon-based system made from eco-friendly materials like wood byproducts and simple sugars. Their approach involves a membrane that separates water vapor from the chemicals, followed by an adsorbent material that binds the PFAs, preventing any re-release. This is significant because we don't want filtration methods that store PFAs temporarily. We need strategies that permanently capture them so they can be properly disposed of. The idea is to ensure these chemicals don't make their way back into the water supply. Both approaches from North Carolina and Tokyo share a common goal, permanently remove PFAs and keep them away from our environment. While the research is still ongoing, this signals major progress in tackling the challenge of forever chemicals. It's not only about filtering water, but also about breaking the cycle that allows PFAs to keep returning to our bodies through daily use. There is a sense of urgency as we learn more about how damaging PFAs can be, particularly for children. I'm encouraged by these developments. However, as consumers, we can't simply wait around for new technologies to become available. There are actions we can take right now to reduce our exposure. The first step is to check the water quality report in your area. Most municipalities publish these reports, and some specifically include PFAs levels. If you use well water, testing through an independent lab can be crucial. Knowing what you're dealing with is the foundation for deciding your next moves. Once you have that information, selecting a suitable filter is important. Reverse osmosis systems, for instance, have shown effectiveness in removing PFAs, as have certain activated carbon filters. Both methods aim to capture or separate out these chemicals. Though they're not always perfect, they're currently among the most accessible tools to improve water quality in your home. Ion exchange filters might soon become an option on the market, but for now, these two are typically recommended. Beyond filtering water, it's also a good idea to examine items you use every day that might contain PFAs. Nonstick cookware is a common source, so some people opt for ceramic or enameled cast iron instead. Stain-resistant treatments on carpets or furniture are another possible source of exposure. Reducing PFAs, containing items in your household, can lower your overall exposure, and choosing PFAs, free alternatives, is more feasible now than in the past. That's an excellent suggestion. Additionally, you can encourage local policymakers to adopt stronger regulations on PFAs. Community advocacy can drive investments in better water treatment solutions at the municipal level, which benefits everyone. Even simple measures like contacting your local representatives to express concerns can help accelerate changes in local water treatment policies. Yes, and it's helpful to share this information with friends, family, and neighbors. A broader understanding of PFA's risks leads to more unified efforts in demanding safer water. We can each play a small but meaningful role in reducing the impact of these contaminants over time. The issue can feel overwhelming, but practical measures can make a difference. Filters, product choices, and community engagement are all avenues for reducing risk. Before we wrap up, I want to summarize and then run through a few common questions about PFAs. First, these chemicals are persistent, and once they contaminate a water source, they're challenging to remove. Children are especially vulnerable, but everyone faces potential health consequences ranging from liver issues to certain cancers. However, new filtration methods, ion exchange, advanced activated carbon, and specialized membranes are showing promise for permanent removal. Let's move to a concise Q&A to solidify what we've covered. Absolutely. First question, what are PFAs and why are they called forever chemicals? PFAs are man-made compounds found in many everyday products due to their water and stain-resistant properties. They're called forever chemicals because they don't easily break down, persisting in water sources and in the human body for long periods. Next, how do PFAs get into drinking water? They enter through industrial runoff, landfill leaks, 
and firefighting foam used near rivers or lakes. Once in the water, they're difficult to remove without specialized filtration techniques. Third, what health risks do PFAs pose? PFAs exposure is associated with an elevated risk of cancer in children, along with fertility problems, liver damage, and potential harm to the immune system. These are serious concerns for both children and adults. Fourth, what is the best way to remove PFAs from water right now? Reverse osmosis and activated carbon filtration are two of the most accessible and effective options currently available. They trap or separate PFAs, lowering the overall levels in drinking water. Finally, are there additional steps to reduce PFAs exposure? Yes. Check your local water report, use effective filters, avoid products like nonstick cookware that might contain PFAs, and support measures to strengthen regulations on these chemicals. Thank you, Alara. It's clear that PFAs contamination is a concern for many communities. Although the challenges are significant, advances in research and technology provide hope for cleaner water in the near future. We each can help by staying informed, filtering our water, and advocating for safer standards. Indeed, by taking a few proactive steps, we can limit our exposure and protect our health. Research into sustainable filtration technologies is gaining momentum, and more solutions could become widely available soon. In the meantime, understanding PFAs, testing your water, and choosing proven filtration methods are some of the most effective measures you can take. That concludes this episode of Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and I appreciate you joining us for this important discussion. Stay informed, check your water, and consider upgrading your household filtration if necessary. Thank you for listening. We hope this conversation has provided useful insights into PFAs and the importance of protecting your household water supply. Take care, and we'll see you next time on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom.